Smokin! <laughs> Start as you mean to go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's do a proper intro. <clears throat> I mean, that was better than Jamie Kennedy, wasn't it? Hello and welcome to Diminishing Returns. A very special week this week. So we're doing a film that uh, I picked. That's right, isn't it? Boo. <laughs> this is one of my choices. And it's because I, I I sort of picked it up in a in a charity shop, a DVD, and I was like, oh, I haven't seen this for years. I'm going to watch this. So I decided to save it until we did it for the show. Huh. I just assumed you were just a massive fan of it and wanted to do it, and I was like, "Oh God, have I got to watch this film again?" Fine. <laughs> well, kind of. It was like I, I haven't watched it for for ages, but I remember the last time I watched it was like it had been ages since I saw it, and I thought, "Wow, that really held up." Um, so I kind of wanted to watch it again. So we are doing the mask, the mask with Jim Carrey, and of course. The nineties. Everyone, everyone did the smoking line. What? <laughs> <laughs> but why? <is> there... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, a million dollars. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so oh, the nineties, uh, the the mask. I mean, we have a little nineties revival. Ding dong! <laughs> oh god, <laughs> who could this possibly be? <laughs> Hi there, it's me, Bill. Oh, <laughs> fucking Bill Clinton! Oh no, Bill! Yes, you were the president. We get it. Piss off. <laughs> Whenever we do anything that's based on a comic book, I always turn to you first, uh, Sol. Oh, uh, okay. Do you know anything about the history of The Mask? This is based on a comic book. That That's worth mentioning. Yeah, it, it's often referred to as a superhero comedy film. If you look at the Wikipedia page, for example, mm-hmm. I take issue with that. Um, yeah. I don't think this is a superhero film at all. I think it is... I mean, there's some tropes of the genre in there but it's it's far more um like a Jekyll and Hyde thing really it's not it's more Jekyll and Hyde oh. than Incredible Hulk isn't it and yes. um i think that's probably because having never read the comics my guess would be that they are far more of a superhero thing where he dons this alter ego with the mask and and fights crime and does stuff with it and They've just kind of turned that into a conventional, as of nineteen ninety four, film version, which means they've toned down how much of a superhero he is. Yeah, I understand the f- the film version was a lot more kind of wacky rather than nasty and violent. I, yeah, I think I think it is. I think the comic is quite dark comparatively. I think it's very similar to the Men in Black. Um, mm adaptation that we spoke about recently which similarly went from being very dark and gritty to a comedy and I think the mask the comic book was always quite wacky and silly but like like you say in a dark violent way it wasn't a kind of looney tunes for kids kind of thing but I'm, I'm afraid I don't really know very much Beyond that, yeah. Well, it wasn't a big, huge, well-known comic, thing, so. comic book, particularly, was it? It was a, you know, relatively small thing. Yeah, it wasn't your Marvel or DC. Although Thor is in it, kind of. Yeah. Well, we'll probably Paid talk about that in a second film. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's go back to 1994. Jim Carrey is um, having a moment. Well, when I guess when he was casting this. Relatively unknown. I mean, he would have been on In Living Colour. This was, was one of his breakout Canadian roles. Show, yeah. Well, 94 was his year. The release of Ace Ventura, The Mask and Dumb and Dumber were all in 94. Uh, and it was no. his breakthrough year. He was the Keanu Reeves of 94, wasn't he, Alan? That's what they say. Well, Keanu, that would be 
Keanu Reeves. <laughs> when did Speed come out? 95? Keanu Reeves is the Jim <laughs> Carrey of 2019. He's having uh, a moment. He's the Matthew McConaughey of 1994. Wait, no. He's the 2013... When did Matthew McConaughey have his time? 2013? He's the last 30 years. He's been never stronger the whole time. Whatever. Anyway, so... <laughs> he had a very good year. Yeah. Um, a, a complete, uh, you know, star making. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, but looking at the cast, other than that, you so you got Jim Carrey who is the lead, and obviously we'll come on to that in a second. Uh, what exactly what he brings to it? But let's call him an unknown in terms of you trying to yeah, sell this well, film. He basically, was yeah. You've got Cameron Diaz as the kind of femme fatale figure who was literally an unknown. Yeah, to the point they gave her an and introducing credit. This is her very first credit on uh, on her CV. She's in, uh, in her early 20s. And then the rest of the cast are, yeah, kind of people you don't really see in that much. You're like, oh, yeah, I know him from something. And uh, Well, yeah, I mean, the, the guy who plays Jim... Jim Well, Jim Carrey plays Stanley Ipkiss. So the guy who plays Stanley Ipkiss's sort of chummy mate at work is Richard Jenny, who's a stand-up comedian. So he didn't do that much acting, but, you know, in the way that in a, certainly in America, stand-up mm. comedians are always trying to get into get their own sitcom and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, like Peter Green is the villain who's one of those actors who you see in a couple of things and he never quite made it. Yeah, it's a kind of boring, generic 90s yeah. villain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and that really sums up most of the cast. Like, oh, yeah, and it's definitely seen them in something. And that's about as far from, as you get. From the 90s, yeah. And quite, yeah. And, and not like, oh, but yeah, they're one of those little actors that you see and stuff and they're really good. And they always bring, it's like, no, <laughs> they're actors who yeah. careers, you know, signify their talent. Well, I like, um, I like Peter Rygert. Am I saying that right? Yeah, though? like, not to say there's anything wrong with him particularly, but it's. He's in quite a lot of stuff, actually, even now. But. I mean, he's very much someone I have to look up and be like, time. "Oh, I've seen him in that." Yeah. So it's a. It's, this film is not being sold on the cast, um, and and the fact that the the I mean, Cameron Diaz doesn't really do much. It's not like this she's is not what in it that much really sold her. It's just she she fit the role well. She did a good job. She's got four scenes, five scenes. She's barely in it. Yeah, and Jim Carrey, of course. Is the film? It makes the film. Yeah, he is. And and can I say up front? I think, I think most people think about this film being, well, he, he's this meek, boring guy, and then he puts on the mask and he becomes this Jim Carrey improv tour de force, doing silly voices. It's pure Carrey. Mm. To be honest, I'm more interested in Jim Carrey as Stanley Ipkiss. Yeah, I think he brings so much to that role. There's so much about his performance as this kind of krellboyn esque character, mm. this meek guy. I'm way more into that than when he goes all green and then he's just like, <laughs> smoking! I, I mean, he's not even <laughs> quite sure what his voice is. It, 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 it's, I don't know what he's doing. But I, I, we, we did Aladdin recently and we, we, we talked a lot about what how Robin Williams brings the genie to light and what Kind of, that's an irreplaceable. I said they thing. should have cast Jim Carrey in the live action well, film. Well, exactly, and we talked about like who Jim Carrey was one of those names that we threw out in terms of like the kind of inimitable. You know, you, you get something with that person that you're not going to get with anyone else, and that is exactly what you get in the mask, and it's what you get in Ace Ventura. Really, I mean, Dumb and Dumber probably not quite the same, but yeah, the mask. And... There's flashes of it in Dumb and Dumber, but yeah, yeah that's that's a much more muted performance. But there's, <laughs> there's not many people who could really bring. You want to, you want someone to play what is essentially a cartoon character I, in a real. World. I wish I could say case in point, Jamie Kennedy in Son of the Mask. <laughs> not to get ahead of ourselves, but no one went into that thinking he was a good idea. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to that. We've the life that Jim Carrey brings to this character, and and essentially, I mean it. Pays a lot of due to to cartoons, you know. Oh, he becomes very, a cartoon very character. overtly. They make a huge song and dance about Stanley Ipkiss goes home and watches cartoons mm. on VHS, and he's got like cartoon animation stills hung all over his wall, and his is everything about his personality is he's obsessed with 
classic Looney Tunes and Tex Avery and all these kind of. But I think the idea is that the the personification of the mask comes from within. So that I makes, believe that so, makes yeah. perfect sense. You know, it's yeah, like yeah, what's yeah, in yeah, him. Completely. It's his idea of what this kind of super suave gangster guy would be. And and that's the other thing. I, I, it's been a while since I saw this film, so I kind of forgotten. But quite early on, I, I I made a note saying, "I'm getting a real '30s vibe from this." Like this was just in the mm. bank where he works, and like the obviously the introduction of Cameron Diaz, this classic sort of femme fatale of like, oh, um, you know, uh, uh, she was wearing a little yeah. red dress and her legs were longer than the Mississippi. You know, it was like that kind of yeah. Th- yeah. feel to it. And then and then it kind of clicked. Oh yeah, there's a whole gangster thing going on here. It's like an yeah, like an old Warner Brothers gangster film um, mm. from the thirties, and obviously he does like he does when Jim Carrey does his Edward G. Robinson impression in this. Um, as long as I'm around, I want to be second best. See, eh? uh, that's my impression of Edward G. Robinson. I've realised that I don't do a, a, an imp- impression of Edward G. Robinson. I do Jim Carrey in the mask doing Edward G. Robinson. Do you do, you do a Clint Eastwood impression, or do you do a? Jim Carrey doing Clint Eastwood. <laughs> I don't, I wasn't don't it wasn't that. as good that impression was it? <laughs> Tell you what though, he worked on it, and then he came back nine years later and did it in Bruce Almighty, Bruce Almighty much yeah. better. He does it a lot, I think. He does it all. Uh, yeah, so Jim Carrey came up through In Living Color, which was a sketch show, and so it's all about char- creating big characters. And I think he did impressions and stuff on there as well, from what little I've seen of it. Here he gets a chance to use all that. Um, and, and and bring a lot of it to life. It's it's a I think a fantastic blend of practical and and CG effects. Uh, you know, in 1994, I think it holds up very well. Obviously, it helps that it's kind of cartoonish effect, so that's fine. It works well. It's incredibly dated now, but for 1994, I mean, these were fucking groundbreaking special effects. It's really quite impressive, and it's to the point that. I, I was kind of struggling as I watched it to understand how Jim Carrey had so much faith in what they were going to do. When, it, when <laughs> you watch Jim Carrey miming, you know, eating a bomb or some yeah. something where they've had to put some weird CGI effect over him. Mm. And, and I was just thinking, like, he must have no real concept of how this is going to look, because CGI just isn't really... A thing at this point. There was one bit where he has a wolf's head or a dog's head or whatever. He's in his blow. He's he's wolf whistling, uh, so he's got his fingers in his mouth. But obviously the mouth is eight inches ahead of his real head because it's a fake dog head. So he's like he's obviously stood there with his hands like in front of his face, <laughs> and it just must be like, yeah, you've got to have the faith that that's going to look good, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and for 1994, it looks all right. I think it looks it, fantastic. It's... I think it's hold up really well. It's incredibly dated, but... I don't I think, think it's that it's... dated. I think it looks really cool. Oh, it is. It, the the pacing and timing of it's all a bit skewiff as well. There's so much sped up footage, and there, there's a lot of stuff that wouldn't be nearly as um, clunky nowadays. It would be a lot more seamless, but for, to say how pioneering it was, it's very I think impressive. I kind of embraced that as part of the charm of it, rather than thinking it was outdated. But you're right, that sort of stuff is there. But because this film has a sort of old-fashioned aesthetic to it, and it has this like mm. cartoon quality to it, I think it gets away with a lot of stuff that if you were trying to play it straight, you, you wouldn't. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't really made very many notes about this one. I, I think Jim Carrey is just wonderful. I, I love Jim Carrey. I think yeah. it's such a shame that his career just... I don't know. that We just don't get Jim Carrey like this anymore, do we? It's, well, well he is, that's that's going to be turned around next year, isn't it, Alan? I don't know. Well, he is in his late 50s. I with mean, what, what, with the release of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Jim Carrey starring oh, yeah. as the one, the only Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Yeah, I saw the trailer. A.K.A. Eggman. <laughs> Uh, not very eggy, is he? It didn't look great. <laughs> I think it's going to be exactly what Jim Carrey needed to turn his career around. <laughs> okay, have you have you in in part of your looking at this film? Have you looked at Cameron Diaz's sort of IMDb or anything? <laughs> Why? Because I was going to do a quiz like. Well, she didn't spend ten years at the top. Well, no, I was going to say. Can, how, let's see how many Cameron Diaz films can you name. Okay. Just, just a little All quick right. quiz. See, see what. There's you can something do. about Mary. Uh, yes, that's probably the one that made her 
bit more of a household name, I guess. Yeah, more more than just a flash in the pan with the mask, certainly, and it's a much more substantial role. So hang on, let's, I'll keep count. You've got the mask and, and there's something about Mary. Okay, go. Bad Teacher. Bad Teacher, yeah, that was one of the later ones, more recent. Yeah, yeah that was, yeah. Uh, did she do a film called Sex Tape? A film called was that Sex her? Tape? Yes, that was... 2014 sex tape. I haven't I've, seen I've it. I've never but... heard of that. <laughs> but yes, you're correct. It was around that bad teacher era when she was attempting to relaunch her career again mm-hmm. before she gave up on it. Um, uh, I know she did a, a fetish video um, <laughs> before the mask, with her dressed in like uh, latex. Oh, really? Thank you, Crystal. Oh, look at her. Look how big they got. big. <laughs> Okay, here we go. I even got that. Probably not on IMDb, that one. Um, <laughs> I mean, you are missing a couple of big ones. Am I? Yeah. All right. Give me a second. Charlie's Angels. No. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Charlie's Angels 2. Yes. Full Throttle, I believe it was called. That's correct. Um, oh, God. Um, no. I'm done. You are missing an extremely big one. I'll give you a clue. It's a voice acting job. Oh, Shrek, Shrek 2, Shrek <laughs> yeah, the yeah, third, yeah, yeah. Shrek goes forth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the big one you missed. Okay, so you, you, you found Ding eight dong. there. Oh, hello. Let's just open this door. No, don't, don't open it. Don't open it. Uh, I'll just, I'll peek through the letterbox. Oh, look, there's a nose at the letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> sort of hairy nose. Is it, is it a hairy, wet nose? <laughs> The tongue. There's a waffle coming through. The <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Don't let me in. Don't so let me in. You got you got eight there. Four of those were Shrek films. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, you got ten. Sorry, ten. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, let's have a look. What else is going on? Uh, a life less ordinary is Danny Boyle film. That is pretty big. Oh, that's, I think, the one Danny Boyle film I've not seen. Very Bad Things, which is, I think, John Favreau's directorial debut, which I quite liked, actually. Oh, I have seen that film. Is that the one where they kill a, 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 a lady of the night, yeah. played by porn star Kobe Tai? Oh, I don't know who plays the porn star. <laughs> I do who the actors are in it. Uh, she's in Being John Malkovich, of course. Is she? Where she's dowdied up. Oh, that was her that at all. going dowdy. Um, and then, yeah, some the Green things. Hornet, apparently. Yeah. Don't remember that. Any given Even though I like that film. Night and Day is the one I was trying to remember. That's the Tom Cruise. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. The Box, that was awful. I have seen that. That was a dreadful film. The Holiday, I should remember that. My mum oh, goes yeah, on about that film all the time. Nice, yeah. Gangs of New York, I've not seen that oh, one. Yeah, Minority of Report? She, is in that, yeah. she has an uncredited cameo as a bus passenger in no, Minority no, Report. No, I can't. Didn't know that. Slackers. Mm. I can't remember what Vanilla Sky. There's a lot of films I haven't seen, basically. Yeah. I mean, I've seen quite a lot of these, to be honest with you, but it's um, it's a funny old career. And, and her last credit was in 2014. That's yeah, well, she's. I believe she's basically retired. Um, very consciously, I think she's said, like, oh, I've had enough of that. She was like, well, fuck it. Too old now. Yeah, I mean, she... If she, the last credit was in 2014, she would have been 42. I mean, in the old days, that's when women retired <laughs> from acting. That's know, it. There, the there was a brief window where she could play the kind of Mrs. Robinson roles. Yeah. And she capitalised on it. And then... Because she's not the greatest actor in the world. No, she's so. perfectly fine, but perhaps that's yeah. not enough to get you through when you, you the looks aren't there to play the leading lady yeah. roles. Like, for example, Jennifer Aniston seems to keep plodding along doing stuff. Um, yeah, but she is a very... She's she? a much better actor, I'd say, with a lot more uh, personality that. to her. She, I, I've never seen her really try and do proper drama. I don't know if she's capable mm-hmm. or not, but I think there's a lot more personality to Jennifer Aniston. And I say that as someone who's not even... You know, Rachel's probably my least favourite friend, Alan. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, that's a little Cameron Diaz sidebar. Uh, okay, so let's get back to the film. Uh, just, there is one member of cast. Well, should we talk about her in the film? 
we've kind of covered it when we said she's, she's fine, isn't she? She's fine. <laughs> she's fine. She she's there to be eye candy. She's a gangster's mole kind of figure, and yeah, she's she's a, she's a conventionally attractive blonde woman. Yeah, were it not for the fact that she went on to become Cameron Diaz, we wouldn't give her a second thought, really. Uh, I read something about um, in the, when they were talking about a sequel, or like immediately afterwards, they wanted Amy Yazbek, who plays Peggy Brandt, uh, the journalist character in this film. They were setting her up for the sequel, and in fact, in the in the film, something that happens is Peggy Brandt kind of double crosses the mat, uh, well, Stanley yeah. Ipkiss, and then we never see anything. Nothing comes of that. Uh, like in terms of her character, she just disappears. But apparently, yeah. there was there was a scene where she was killed, and they cut it out because they wanted to keep her character available for the sequel. And in fact, is it's her character in the in the animated series, right? Masks. Excuse me, Peggy. After my bumble date last night, the last thing I want to see are masks. No, come on. It was meant to be. The tickets just showed up on my doorstep this morning. So since you rarely have anything better to do except spend a year planning a date, I figured you wouldn't mind coming along with me to Stanley. What's up? Look, I used to love the cartoon based on this film as a kid. I I I much preferred the cartoon to the film. In fact, but there's one last thing I gotta sing about. Open up wide and really shout. Oh. Yeah, I, I really loved that cartoon. I haven't seen it since mm-hmm. I was six or seven. But you know, Rob Paulson mm-hmm. as an animated mask running around in in looking less garish than the live action equivalent, because there's something a bit unsettling about live action Jim Carrey with that green stuff on. <laughs> Just a nice. I, I mean, it's oh, it's it's made for animation. It's yeah. Oh yeah. I reckon it'd hold up quite well as a Saturday morning cartoon if I went back to it. But the, but she was the one they were trying to hold down for a sequel, and Cameron Cameron Diaz was just some young model who they they threw into it. That's really interesting because a sequel to this film didn't happen for eleven years. Yet it's such a blatant "let's do a sequel" kind of a film, mm-hmm. and Jim Carrey's famously been quite anti sequel throughout his career. Um, just never wanted to repeat the same role apart from Ace Ventura, which he was contractually obligated to do, so it doesn't quite count. I understand. Well, I read somewhere that he did Ace Ventura 2 and felt, I've already done this character, I'm not bringing anything new to it at no yeah. point. And so yeah. then he was like, oh, I don't want to do the same character again, I want to do something new. So yeah, that was kind of what turned him off sequels. Yeah, yeah. So we, there's, there's a member of cast we haven't talked about yet, um, and there is some quality dog acting in this film. Actually, genuinely good dog acting in this yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really There's very good. little in the way of dubbing over Frank Welker going, oh. Um, there, there were a few <laughs> moments where it was like, oh, God. But yeah. It... But they, they do... The dog adds a lot. Uh, it actually is a sort of crucial character in terms of getting involved in the plot. Yeah. They yeah. Manage, I think they, they do a lot with it. I don't know if it is the dog from Frasier. It looks like... <laughs> But it, it, it genuinely, they actually it's quite subtle acting from the dog. Like I say, like usually they they overdo it with animals because yeah. they're trying to yeah. make a point, and especially in a film that's quite cartoonish. But they they manage to. Um... Well, there's there's a lot of moments that feel like Jim Carrey's just improvising with the dog. Like they kind of vaguely want the dog to do something, and it's maybe not quite behaving the way they want it to, and he's just gone with it. But Jim Carrey's so good that it works. They're, there were a few moments where I thought, oh, I don't think the dog was quite meant to do that or was maybe meant to... And the the dog is involved in some kind of... some quite nice little pay, um, set-up and pay-off little elements. For example, like he's throwing the frisbee from him at the beginning and then at the end he, he yeah, does the same thing, catch really the mask. Nice, yeah. And also, I mean, God, you, 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 you really... You're burying the lead here, but the, dog the dog. acting that dog, the, the performance on that dog when he puts the mask on. <laughs> yeah. How did how did they get him to do that? They just painted him green and set him. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Putting the mask on the dog is kind of a a, a, a great moment. It's like yeah, it was okay, an inevitable. It was it was like the second you see how the mask works and the dog in the same film. I think well, certainly I was just sat there just going. Are they gonna? Are they gonna do it? And then they do do it, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have a bit of fun with that. They don't overdo it. They don't decide to make the whole film around it, mm. as we'll see. Was not a good idea. 
Um, oh, the only other, the other person who wears the mask is the bad guy, and he becomes like a big sort of fat head villain. Yeah, I didn't guy. like that because when he puts neck. on the mask, when Jim Carrey puts on the mask, he kind of talks like that. Smoke him. But the other guy, when he puts on the mask, his voice just gets like artificially deepened like this, yeah. and it's like, well, why Jim Carrey's voice wasn't deepened? Mm. I'll tell you why, it sounds shit. <laughs> why wouldn't you just cast a really charismatic actor who can do a kind of gangster voice? And he doesn't have to be going as full on like Jim Carrey with it, but someone who can do kind of two modes <laughs> of acting. <laughs> why wouldn't you cast someone who, who has Kelsey two Graham. different levels? <laughs> hey, I mean, that would have worked. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it would. There's a couple of a couple of gags I want to ask you about. Um, yeah, go on. He meets he meets the Cameron Diaz character at Landfill Park, which is a park. Uh, it's called Landfill Park. Now, is that supposed to be a joke, or is that like actually a thing? You know, they do turn landfill into parks sometimes. I couldn't quite figure out if it was supposed to be funny or not. That sounds like a joke that is perhaps a joke in the comics. And yeah, like it's a reference they just to something. Kept the name of the place from the comics when they made the film. Maybe it just to kind of... it just it wasn't quite eat one thing or the other. Anyway, doesn't matter. There's a there's a Rodney King gag, which may have been an improv line from Jim Carrey, where he's getting arrested and he and he goes, "Where's a camcorder when you need one?" Which is obviously like in reference. If anybody didn't know, Rodney King was oh, yeah, a. Very a, topical. a a black man in LA who was beaten up by the police when they were arresting him for something uh, and really badly beaten and someone... It was a trivial um, traffic thing, I believe, wasn't it? They kind of pulled him out. Yeah, it didn't need a beating, put it that way. Um, and someone happened to be around with a camcorder. It was 94, we didn't know what had cameras back then. Uh, and they filmed it and it became a big cause celebre and mm. it basically well, it sparked off, off race war <laughs> in LA. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, culminating in OJ Simpson getting away with murder. <laughs> that, was, that was sort of it boiling over with that. But yeah, it was a fascinating period. It is. There. And this is, what, two years later? And he's making like an offhand gag about it. <laughs> it's like, mm, interesting. <laughs> like, I think if you did that gag now, well, no one would get it. Would they? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a, that was an odd thing. B- bit raw to be joking about that at the time. Especially there's no black people in this film, as far as I can tell. <laughs> or the play security guards. <laughs> awesome thing. <laughs> Oh, we the mask is Loki, uh, yeah. Which obviously we we all know and love Loki now, but we didn't then. I think I've had a vague concept of Loki as the trickster god for a while before Marvel came along. Yeah, well, that's probably because, because of the mask. <laughs> I was going to say probably because of the mask. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we I guess we haven't really talked about the mechanics of the mask, and that's because it doesn't really matter. It's like this mask that they find, and then it's a magic mask. It's like that's about as it's like Jumanji, deep as you go with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the drums you throw it out in some water, but... it washes up, someone else hears the drums, picks it up, puts it on. You know the name Stanley Ipkiss, the, 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 the yeah. main character's name? Is that, a, is that mean something? Is that, it's such an odd name. I think it's like, is it's, it? I don't know. It's from I, the comics. I, I wondered, watching Son of the Mask earlier, and the character being called Rex Tex Avery, Avery. <laughs> his name is. Yeah. I was like, oh, was Ipkiss an animator I should know about as well, or something like that? Yeah. But I don't know. I don't. Probably not. Well, it might be <laughs> like it's, it might be like Krellborn. It's just a sort of dorky name. It's just so this film was nominated for an Oscar for best visual effects. Yeah. Um it lost to Forrest Gump. Mm. Uh, quite wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest Gump had some pretty pioneering, remarkable effects work in it as well. Oh, but, you know, it, ding dong! Inserting... Look, it, it's it's Forrest Gump meeting Richard Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, Mr. Nixon. Oh wait, I went. I am the... <laughs> not a. <laughs> oh wait, it's Forrest Gump meeting uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. I think he meets in that. <laughs> uh, go on, do your Lyndon B. Johnson song. Ding dong! Oh no, look, he's back. Hi guys. I Can was, I join in? I was too late for Forrest Gump. <laughs> Get out of here. Take your Oscars with you. Just dropping Oscars everywhere, Tom Hanks. <laughs> I'm I'm just reading IMDb's trivia, right? All right. And I take issue with this, and maybe you'll maybe you'll be able to. I take issue with all why. IMDb trivia. Yeah, no, what? but maybe you'll you'll know specifically what I take issue with here, I think. Let's see. Let's see if you can figure it out. 
The part when Jim Carrey is being chased by the gangsters and pulls the wet condom out of his pocket and says, sorry, wrong pocket, right, yeah. was improvised by Carrey. I mean, I can believe that, that he slipped a condom into his pocket. Is that improvised? Well, it's pre- it's not if in you, the script. If you prepare, yeah. if you yeah, prep he's gonna do it. your own little gag prop beforehand, is I that think, improvised? I think that classes as imp- uh, if it's not in the script and they're not sort of expect, yeah, okay, it's perhaps not their best word, but we know what it means. Mm. I can believe that that's something uh, he, he threw out without telling the director, just to give him a little chuckle. Oh, can we speak about the director, Chuckle uh, Russell, um, Chuck Russell, who? Because watching this film, I thought it has real look to it quite a directorial like and and the, yeah, the, yeah, the tone yeah. well, it's, they choose is very and, like, inspired by 1930s cartoons yeah yeah exactly but it does a great job of bringing them into a kind of live action take on it, it yeah yeah it is so i was i was thinking the director and i and when i was watching the film i was like i didn't look it up until the end i was like i don't know who directed this which suggests yeah. it's not someone who went on to do other things and indeed it's not he didn't particularly do much but what happened? Because I think this this shows real. Fla- this film oh, man. shows real. I fucking. Talent. Sorry, I'm still reading IMDb's trivia. I fucking knew it. I was gonna point. I mean, maybe this is all dubious. It's IMDb trivia, but one of the points I was really thinking that seems like Jim Carrey improvising around the dog. This says a lot of moments involving the dog were ad libs on set. The moment where Milo won't let go of the frisbee when he's trying to stash. And he whacks him in the face. Yeah, wasn't planned, and it was uh, Jim Carrey ad libbing a frustration, frustrated reaction to it. But I remember when I watched it, that was I. I assumed, oh, that looked like a little improv to cover up the fact that the dog's not doing what they want it to. <laughs> um, yeah, that's perfect. But that's the thing; it works, and that's that's why someone like Jim Carrey brings a lot to a film because mm. they they make it work when it isn't working. Basically, that's <laughs> that's kind of in a in a nutshell. So, the director Chuck Russell. Uh, he did Eraser, which I think is this Arnold Schwarzenegger film. Well, what did he do to destroy his career after this? Did he refuse to sleep with <laughs> Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> it's too soon, man. Too soon. Uh, he did The Scorpion King, which was a bit of a mm. flop. Um, yeah. And then he didn't work after that for many years. Oh, his no. his latest film in 2019 is called Jungli, and it <laughs> seems to be a, a Hindi film. <laughs> Yeah, it seems to be a that's a Bollywood film. It looks like. Oh wow, he directed Dream Warriors. Dream, Dream Warriors. Warriors. I watched that relatively recently. It's one of the better Nightmare on Elm Street films, but it's not good. But you know, what can you do? Right. Uh, sh- shall we rate the mask and and then we shall move on? Yeah, I don't really have much else to say about it, other than it's such a such an encapsulation of the '90s in a film. I would recommend. I think this this would be spot on for a twelve year old though. I think if I, if I had a yeah, kid, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd definitely show him this. It's just, I think it holds I, up. I think admirably. I give him all of Jim Carrey's <laughs> golden years on the VHS. They have to watch it on VHS. Get the full nineties experience. Mm-hmm. You were saying a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about Men in Black. You were saying that Men in Black should be held up as more of a classic, like Ghostbusters is. Yeah. And I kind of feel the same way about The Mask. It feels like this should be in the consciousness like Jumanji, which is about the same time. Like, it sh- it should resonate a bit more than it does. I think I think The Mask is a bigger deal. Is or it? certainly was a bigger deal than Jumanji. I think for ten years, people were like, why isn't there a Mask sequel? Oh, because Jim Carrey doesn't make sequels. And then I think Son of the Mask came out and everyone went, uh. yeah. and I think that's what kind of killed it in its tracks, to be honest. Because I, I agree. that I, I'm amazed, frankly, that no one's come along and tried to reboot it yet in this age of superheroes and mm. comic book movies now. Yeah. It seems so fucking obvious that you you do a, a kind of authentic take on the mask, or like a proper comic book. Oh, like you, unless you do, yeah, you go serious with it. You kind of go dark. Well, that's it. it. I think I think the obvious way to do it now would be straight up faithful adaptation of the comics that captures what they're about and makes it much more of a superhero thing, um, Hellboy esque. But yeah, but, yeah and still that would be got different a sense enough. of humor, but it's got yeah. But even if you didn't do that, I I think you could do this very well. You know, you, you get Chris Hemsworth in there with the mask on him and. Uh, 
<laughs> just let him rip. No, no, no. <laughs> we, okay, should we just do a, some pitch ideas now? Seeing as though we're talking about it, and then we'll talk about the sequel. Oh well, yeah, who, who who's you, the who would be the mask? If you were just gonna do, it's the mask again with a new actor. Well, I'll, that's obvious. Will Smith. No, he's too old. <laughs> <laughs> And he's, uh, he's not got the rate. He's not genie proved. He's not quite got that. Doesn't have to sing. Really, Cuban Pete. <laughs> ha ha, Cuban Pete. Ha ha, wicked, wicked. <laughs> okay, so you're going with a different feel. Let's. You go with a different vibe. You don't want to do thirties gangster thing anymore. That's it. You don't want to do, do the you, exact what do same you do? thing. But what? you need someone who can just do improv and but what, voices. But what period setting do you go for? Like, where do you go with it? 1970s glam rock. <laughs> no, because this isn't set in the 30s. It's set in 1994, but it has a very 1930s aesthetic, which is just sort of accepted. It's just part of the story world fit. That's God, how it works. Who, who is an actor that could do that into the, like a big enough star? But it's but you, like you say, Jim Carrey wasn't a star. Who you want someone? From a sketch True. background, yeah. probably sketch comedy, big character impressionist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sol right. Harris, he, he can do the voices. <laughs> Fresh off of diminishing returns, <laughs> some quality improv, some Bill Clinton impressions in there. Yeah, that worked. Uh, what about Jared Leto? Oh, God, please no. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who's on Saturday Night Live these days. Do they still do stuff? Do they still do shows? <laughs> I don't think. Keenan Thompson. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> uh, uh, some of the women ones. Yeah, maybe maybe, you, maybe we go for a woman mask these days. Is that the way to go with it? Kate McKinnon. <sighs> she, she, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of her. Is she big. You need you need someone who's a ball of energy, really. Don't you? I like the idea of a female mask. We haven't seen a woman put the mask on in any of these films, have we? No. Have we? No. That never happens. But I just can't think of anyone who'd be right. Kate McKinnon's as close as I can see to that working. And like you say, I don't know if I've quite seen enough of her yet. But then I can't really think of any men who could pull it off, to be no, honest. No, no. Too. It's difficult. It's Oh, you know what? She's too old for it now, but I bet you Helena Bonham Carter could have done it. <laughs> she she can she's got weird manic energy. She could tap into something. <sighs> Do it's a lot of weird voices. It is. You just made me think of it. It's the sort of thing that maybe a Sasha Baron Cohen could could put together. Mm. But Sasha Baron Cohen's who you get for like the Netflix TV spin-off of The Mask. I don't <laughs> yeah. know if it's quite enough for a film. Neil Patrick Harris. Oh. There must be a sketch show that I've watched in the last few years <laughs> that I've enjoyed. <laughs> there must be. I mean, like someone like a young, a young Steve Coogan or someone could do it. But again, I just I feel like he's a bit too not too old, but like we've seen too much of yeah, his range yeah, yeah. put to use elsewhere at this point. So it wouldn't be like he's just throwing out. Oh God, this shouldn't be so difficult. I mean, I, that's the trouble. I don't know. I've I've got really hung up on this now. But oh, Kevin Kevin Bishop, that's who you want. <laughs> <laughs> Seth MacFarlane would be great once the mask's on, but the problem is he'd, ha- he'd also have to play a likeable character just like himself without any makeup on, and that just wouldn't work. <laughs> That'd be good, though. Puts the mask on. Smoking! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who'd be playing his best mate? Um... <laughs> oh, Patrick Warburton. <laughs> Stanley, my legs don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I know what. I was actually genuinely quite surprised that Patrick Warburton didn't show up at all in Son of the Mask. <laughs> didn't that just seem like... His level. <laughs> yeah. So, the mask didn't happen for ten years. But then it did happen. The Son of the yeah. Mask. Well, they finally... I think they would... The impression I get is they wanted Jim Carrey back for the sequel. And they didn't move ahead with it because Jim Carrey wasn't going to do it. That's sort of what it felt like to me for 10 that years. seems odd. I mean, obviously you want Jim Carrey, but if you're got, not going to get him, but you want to still make a film and try and make some money out of this thing, you can do... The mask is the thing. You you find another actor and you put yeah. the mask on them. Well, not just that. He gives up the mask at the end. He throws it away. It, it lends itself to just doing it with a new actor. But... Um, 
yeah, they, they moved ahead with a sequel, eventually deciding, well, we're not getting Jim Carrey back. They did Son of the Mask, and they clearly struggled to cast it more than we just did, because they inexplicably landed on Jamie Kennedy as their lead man, who is the worst <laughs> person they could have gone with, I think. I don't know, especially when Matthew Lillard's available. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Matthew Lillard would have been alright. He brings a lot of energy to everything he does. But th- th- this is not the first time on our podcast that Jamie Kennedy has been brought in to save a franchise. Uh, we've seen it in Tremors 5 or whichever yeah, one it was. I think, four I think in Tremors 5 we spoke about how he was a very bland, unexciting addition to the franchise. Mm-hmm. I mean, here he's just actively terrible. <laughs> And I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much of it's his fault. He shouldn't have been let in the audition room to begin with. I don't know how this happened. I don't know how they put him in this film. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe they thought. Maybe they thought it's all right if he's shit. Don't worry, because we've got Alan Cumming. <laughs> so he'll make up for it. And Alan Cumming should be well. I, I like Alan Cumming. I've seen him do comedy that I like. But I've also seen him do a lot of shit. Yeah, I think he can bring a lot to a role. I don't think he's the guy you put in a mask film as someone who breaks out loads of energy and silly voices. And I don't think that's really him, from what I've seen. But he can do silly voices, if but he doesn't do any of them here. Doesn't do any good ones. Yeah, I mean, I, I really everything about this film was just baffling. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know how this happened. It or, is... I don't know how it happened the way that it happened. It it felt like a film where no one was on the same page making it. It felt yeah. like a film made by several different parties who were all trying to do something Never different with met. it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it is a very distinct and bold visual style. Yeah, I, I really have to say, to give the director some credit, I agree completely. It, it picked up the baton of the first film visually and ran with it and it's got a lot of energy visually it continues to evoke classic looney tunes and animation and tex avery and that stuff really well Mm -hmm. it has all that down and beyond that there's some really interesting innovative you know weird choices of camera shots and stuff a lot of sort of tracking into the characters and stuff which is yeah it's 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 actually quite a nicely visually directed film Mm. Yeah, which wasn't what I was expecting going back to it today. I was expecting and just a load it's, of shite. It's let down. It feels like TV. It feels like a TV budget mm, sort of yeah, thing, and they're struggling yeah. to make it work. Not necessarily the CG effects, but more the practical stuff. Yeah, the CG. I mean, fuck me. Ten years. It's 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 the same sort of stuff, but just a lot smoother. And you don't give it the same free pass, I suppose, because it was pioneering, because mm. it, it was more par for the course at the time, but it's still, the, the CGI is all pretty good, to be honest. It holds yeah. up quite well in this film, for what it is. Cartoonish. It's like the set, this house that they're in, it feels like a very empty space. Yeah. And it's a very big space, which they've obviously created so they can do some carnage in there, but then they haven't yeah. quite filled it. It's just a weird sort of dynamic in this place. And the lighting... I said a similar thing about um, the la- Dark Phoenix when we talked about that on our, our Dimin episode yeah, that yeah. we did about that. It, it feels like, you know, the gaffer's gone there and they've got, you've only got half an hour to light this, we, we need to shoot. And he's like, oh, well, I'll do what I can. Rather than giving them the time to set up and, and light it properly. And that is down to budget, it's down to time constraint, you know. It's, that's what it feels like to me. So some of the lighting is very... But they're obviously going for like a bold lighting yeah. colour palette thing which doesn't always work yeah, or it, it just feels yeah. outdated somehow. Yeah. And, but the, but even like the, the, the house, like the way the house is coloured, the painting and paint and like the fence is yellow, the windowsills are red, you know, all this sort of stuff. It's They've gone for a cartoonish kind of colour palette yeah. which kind of works. It's, it feels like a bold choice that doesn't quite pay off on the whole thing but it's... Mm. I can understand what they're doing at least. Uh, the, the, it's let down. You were saying there about sort of the pacing and 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 all that. It, it, the editing isn't quite there. What 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 we was what you were just saying about it feeling like TV. The stakes, the plot, it all feels so fucking TV. It just it, I don't know why the plot in the first film feels bigger, but this is just like a guy finds the mask and then they have a mask baby. Basically, it it 
felt very heavily inspired by the classic cartoons that well, did inspire it, the kind of old Looney Tunes stuff. And that extends to the plot being something that can only sustain about 11 minutes. <laughs> yes. And yeah. yet they felt the need to make it into a full film without anything a bit more cinematic. I think they just assumed, well, we'll put Loki and some gods in it, but then they don't really... It felt less than you'd get on something like The Good Place, you know? It just... They make a decision. We established Jamie Kennedy's character puts on the mask and he has this mask moment, but then... It, the the bulk of the film is basically the dog has the mask. Yeah, that's where most of your action. Well, I think what happened there is they in. filmed they filmed the first scene with Jamie Kennedy <laughs> wearing the mask, and they were like, "Oh God, this is awful." <laughs> he can't even speak. <laughs> Why have we designed a character <laughs> makeup dreadful. where the actor can't speak, and we have to dub him in badly afterwards? Why did they? Why is his hair made out of plastic when he puts the mask on? Because. <laughs> That didn't happen with Stanley Ipkiss. I even got a problem with that, though, because it's a nice visual. It kind of looks weird. It's a bit lazy town. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's all right. It's hey, that's aesthetic. who you get. That's who you cast. <laughs> He's dead. Stefan <laughs> Stefanson or whatever. Stefan Carl Robin. Stephenson. <laughs> yes. Have you ever tried a disguise? Nah, nah. All right. I can see that I will have to teach you how to be villains. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> hey, I know you cast Ben Stein. <laughs> Imagine if he put the mask on. Imagine all, what you get out of that. That'd be amazing. Yeah, Ben Stein is the connective tissue between the two films. Yeah, a nice bit of connective tissue. It felt very organic to yeah. bring him back. I quite liked what they did with him in that opening scene where they take his face off. This is a fake. Yes, but it's a good fake. Ow. Sir, that is museum property. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me replace it. What, what, are, what are you doing? Perhaps I should inform you I suffer from vertigo. And I have a lawyer. Hello? One of the problems this film runs into is that if I actually made a note early on, Hang On is Jamie Kennedy playing Stanley Ipkiss. Because... He's not different enough. He's obsessed with animation. He is actually. He an has animator. the exact same yeah. dog. Yeah. He's got the same like foppish hair. He's the same fucking. He's just written as Stanley Ipkiss basically, and then handed to someone shit who can't bring it to life. Do you think this was uh, originally um, written as the sequel? You know, Stanley Ipkiss has got married, and they're yeah, talking about kids. Yeah, I was going to say it. It felt that way. It felt like it was meant to just be Stanley Ipkiss, and he has a baby, and. Did you know there was a um, uh, 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 a sequel announced kind of at one point to the, the original Mask by Nintendo Power? Because they ran yeah. a competition to be an extra in it. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. And uh, then it didn't happen, so some poor kid probably got fucked over. Yeah, so Jamie Kennedy, he's left alone with the baby, he's got to work as well. So... The dog puts a mask on and tries to kill the baby. Yeah. Because yeah. the baby has the power. Jamie Kennedy is cuckolded by Loki, <laughs> the god of <laughs> tricks. Because <laughs> when he puts on the mask, like a gimp mask, he, um, Loki takes over his body and fucks his wife for him and takes gets her pregnant with, semen. with god, god cum. Yeah. And uh, we're, we end up with this kind of demigod baby. Oh, I mean, they try and get some humor out of it, don't they? But and they have they've obviously built their baby CGI model that they wanted to use. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it really depends on whether or not you find a baby doing stuff a grown up would do funny or not. <laughs> doing his taxes. <laughs> yeah, but the the dog works better because obviously, but when it puts the mask on, it actually is just a animated well, character yeah it has a real classic cartoon mischievous like look to camera <laughs> kind yeah. of mutley thing it works i mean you literally have him drawing out his blueprints on how to kill the baby it's very yeah. classic it's yeah. a bit too heavily lean into these cartoons yeah. i mean the, he, the the kid watches the um bam, you know bam, the old the frog uh, one 
hello my baby, hello my nanny, yeah. that one, and then does yeah. that. It's like it's a bit too literal. Well, they like. it's a bit they too do straight do forward. that a bit in the first The Mask. Jim Carrey watches the bit where the, the wolf wolf, wolf yeah. whistles and then does it later on. But so that's, I think that's why that's they've done it. it. But it feels organic in the first film. It yeah, because nice... he watches a clip that's four seconds long and then later on we see it. We don't watch the whole fucking frog dancing yeah. scene and then do it again. And that doesn't give him an idea for a whole plan and yeah. plot strand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jamie Kennedy's just shit, isn't he? Don't you just love Halloween? Let me see your work ID, please. Where did the wife put that invitation? ID, not IV. Excuse me. <laughs> my bad. Maybe I left in my other pants. But you know who else is shit? <laughs> Everyone else in this film. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the the love interest he has? She's dreadful. the wife. Yeah, she's all. Yeah, I've never seen her in anything else, and she doesn't she doesn't work anymore. You could have cast that woman from the room, <laughs> and I don't think the film would have been any worse for it. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, what can you do? Um, yeah, Stephen Wright as the boss is his company. Oh, boss. Yeah, I f- yeah, I forgot he was in it. Yeah, you know what? He's all right. Well, he's Stephen Wright in here, I guess, if you're going to use him. It's... Yeah. But they don't even use It's not like they use him. Yeah. Well, Cal yeah. Penn is. Stephen Wright's all right. Ben Stein's all right. They get away with it. Alan Cumming is better than this, and he should be ashamed of himself. I think everyone else is just shit. Cal Penn, who is best known for Harold and Kumar. He plays is that his mate? Kumar yeah, yeah. The one, the one who became a speechwriter for Obama. Is that right? <laughs> That's why he's not done acting for a bit or stopped acting for a bit i think really yeah 2009 penn joined the obama administration as an associate director in the white house office of public engagement that's interesting he he resigned in 2010 so that he could have a bit of acting again i think that's when he made harold and kumar 3 and then he went back into being obama's uh, guy again mm. and i guess he's come back to acting now but yeah uh yeah, felt like you were gonna say some stuff about him before. Right? Uh, I was just, he was one of the few people I recognised. He's his character is called Jorge, which makes me think they thought he was a Mexican. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was just, yeah, it was a different time, so we we didn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carl Penn. So the mask is famously a terrible film. It's number ten on yeah. IMDb's bottom one hundred. Yeah, it's the tenth yeah, worst yeah. film of all time, according to them. Yeah, uh, which I, I mean, I don't think it is. Yeah, I, I think, I think that's harsh. To be honest, I don't think it's the tenth worst film of all time. But it, but it is. <sighs> it's very bad, and it's using an IP. It, it's flushing potential down the toilet. I think that's why it pissed people off so much. I've definitely given it a little bit of credit in terms of my rating for for effort. I feel like mm. the director is certainly trying something. Perhaps not yeah, Jamie Kennedy yeah. or Alan Cumming. But I feel like there's effort here. Then it's just that they haven't got yeah. quite got the facilities to achieve well, it. I think pl- the dog yeah. works nicely, you know. All yeah, that I works. agree. I, I do agree. It's the plot never feels like anything more than a series of comedy sketches, and that would be all right if they were remotely funny. But they're not. I've made one note. Remember when Alan Cumming went blonde? I think he was being a delivery man who comes yeah. in to look at the baby. Didn't he look like Tim Roth? Um, I can't say it occurred to me at the time. I have to go back and look again. He did. He did look like Tim Roth, I'm telling you. But that that was the whole bit. We have a montage scene where Alan Cummings' character is going around Terminator style trying to find yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah he Connor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah Connor. Wilderness but, girls. But every every time he takes on a different character, someone who might be knocking on the door, that's your chance to do some quality character comedy. And he doesn't quite grab hold of it, well, does he? Can't, he? Can't he doesn't really do, do it. it. I, think, I think Alan Cumming was a bad casting decision. I but like Jim Carrey doing that. <laughs> that oh, would have been ca- brilliant. He would you bring something to it. Did we rate the mask the first one out of ten? Uh no, I don't think we did actually. I'm 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 building up to rating Son of the Mask, so let's do them to both. Okay. Well for comparative reasons. <laughs> what would you give the mask out of ten, the first one? The Jim Carrey the good mask. The mask uh, I mean overall I, I yeah, I think it's classic. I think it's held really well. I, I give it a good sturdy eight out of ten. Oh wow. I like it. I have nostalgia for it. I think it's good, very much product of its time, messy in places, but has a lot going for it. I give it a seven. 
And uh, so then, just for comparison, Son of the Mask, one of the worst films ever, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so... I, like I say, I think that's a bit harsh. Mm. It's bad. I don't think it's quite all-time, all-time worst ever no. film bad. Although, to be fair, I was really annoyed rewatching it. I was like, this is not a film I should ever have had to watch for a second time. <laughs> Um, I give it three out of ten. Son of the Mask. Yeah, I mean, I also gave it three. I... That's maybe more like a two point five that I've rounded up, honestly. But yeah, yeah, like I said, I gave it points for effort, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So the director somewhere in the line. Yeah. All right. Well, we we've talked about it, but let's say you're given the mask IP to play with now. Mm-hmm. How would you approach that? Like I, th- I, like I said, I think the obvious choice would be a straight up reboot that's more in line with the comics. But I don't know if that appeals to me as much as let's make a proper sequel to these two films that already exist. B- well, I say proper sequel, I mean it's set in that same world, it's that same tone, but we just kind of figure out a plot. I mean, fuck it. I think we should bring back Jim Carrey as the dad of someone, as Stanley Ipkiss. Yeah, and his son has found the mask in the basement or whatever. Or his son is now grown up, but he well, passes he's... the mask on. He Well, no, he, he, he got rid of the mask, didn't he? He threw it away. Yeah, well, he threw it away before and it came back. What, are we writing Son of the Mask out of continuity? That's fine yes. if we are. I don't yes. think that matters. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> that, no, okay. Son of the Mask is... Uh, in the in this world, Son of the Mask is a crap film that someone made, <laughs> and they watch it on telly and go, oh, that film was crap. I'm glad it's not a real film. I think someone else should get the mask, but then Jim Carrey should have to... He, he should be like, oh, I know what that is. And he comes back. That's that thing I dealt with years ago. Do you go as do you go kid? Do you go like a fifteen year old or something like that? Or nah, it's probably good. It's probably I was too weird. Say, you, you're getting into crit. If you get a fifteen year old improving like masks, <laughs> just know that's, <laughs> that's going to be horrendous. Okay, yeah. So it's like, but yeah. So it's someone you know, late twenties or whatever. So hey, I've got some. I've got some. You can have some real fun with this, Alan. Some like topical. Oh, times have changed. Humor, yeah. Vaping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> you can have that one for free, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, so and f- uh, and like he passes the mask on or something. He's like, "Oh, I've had this. I don't use it anymore." But you're having a tough time at the moment. I think you. I think you could learn something. All right. If you all right. This. All right. The approach you take is, and maybe it is kids or just young. I think maybe kids. Yeah. Right, it's it's going for a kind of eighties revival. Oh, I love that. It Stranger Things, Stand by Me, like ragtag group of kids, right? They're mates. Now maybe there's a new kid who moves in who's our main character into this neighborhood, something like that. You've got a group of kids. There's a creepy old man who lives in this house, and <laughs> there's like something wrong with him, and they're like, "Oh, don't go over to old Mister Ipkiss's house," because <laughs> of remember the thing that happened years ago. And there's like rumors of this thing, and then they they do the whole dare to go in, and basically he keeps the mask locked up in a cabinet or something in his house. Yeah, he's he's had a load of trouble with it. We'll we'll write some flashbacks in that show it kept coming back, and he couldn't get rid of it, so he he just has to kind of keep it in a safe or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the kids get the mask. Maybe a bully makes them do it and steals the mask or something. So then you get a. You get a charismatic, good child actor to play the bully, so they don't need to be doing all the somebody stop me improv. They just need to bring a bit of charm and energy to a kind of villain role. I think you could do that a lot more easily without it being embarrassing. Mm-hmm. You write some stuff in where I'm trying to figure out how someone else could get the mask on them for big chunks of the film. But basically, you're writing a scenario where they have to go and get the mask back. Jim Carrey gets involved. He, he's in a kind of mentor, older, like like Robin Williams in Jumanji type yeah. role with a kid. So he can put the mask on at points in the film. And it's I fun. think no, I think that has to come at the end where he dons yeah, yeah, yeah. the mask to save the day at the end. Like yeah, he, he, he always swore he'd never. I'd go never back. wear this again. And then but then he, he yeah, goes back yeah. and it's like that old Jim Carrey magic comes to life and he's yeah, young again. Yeah, I completely and agree. Like, and you could have a couple of gags where he's like. Oh, my yeah. back never used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we've written Cameron Diaz out, because she's probably not no, coming back for this. Cares. 
And I like the idea that he's like a, a loner on his own anyway. Milo's dead. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have a quick flash of like a, a photo or like a gravestone. Yeah. I know. Go Somehow on. the mask gets onto a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> or possibly an orangutan. <laughs> oh, God. Right, he lives next to the zoo. <laughs> Somehow, the mask gets put on all the animals in succession. It's just one after the other in a five-minute sketch. <laughs> There's no plot. You, you just you need someone, someone like, dare I say it, Jack Black, to be the new guy who puts the mask on for the bulk of the film and is the villain, I think. Hey, Jack Black, we never mentioned him when we were talking about people who have mm. energy. That wouldn't be a bad choice, really. Yeah. He's definitely got the energy. I don't know if he necessarily has the vo- voice kind of character range. Jack Black at 2005 would have been a pretty good shower. He would have, actually, 2005. It's yeah. a couple of years after School of Rock. He was at his peak. But you get someone like Jack Black in, the modern equivalent. Who could you get now? Why is this so hard? Is, is it because films don't have movie stars the way they used to? Mm-hmm. Marvel Cinematic Universe has replaced these big character actors with the likes of Chris Pratt. The the twat Chris Pratt, as he's now known. We've started the backlash. Chris twat. <laughs> Diminishing returns backlash on Chris Pratt. We were there first. Piss twat. That's what I call him. <laughs> yeah, we were here first. We hated him first. Remember that? Well, I hated him very first. I, yeah, well, I started I'm, trying, yeah, I'm, I'm, catching I'm on. I'm claiming it for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Rami Malek. I don't like him as well. Uh, Can he I'm put the mask on? So far. Until he you know, does something horrible. What about James McAvoy? He does lots of voices and characters. I, I bet. I tell you what, he'd he'd go for it. He'd put he'd put the effort in. I don't think it'd be good, but he'd 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 go for it. The thing with him is, I don't think he'd be able to improv funny little comedy asides and just throw it away. I think you'd have to intricately write every little <laughs> thing the mask does, yeah. and then he'd do it really well. But it would be a very different approach to it, and it would feel different as a result. I mean, maybe Sasha Baron Cohen, someone like that. Maybe that is what you want in the because in the villain role, it doesn't have to be someone who's quite as, as a, good as Jim. More Carrey. as a villain, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I'm just trying to figure out why an adult would get the mask and then the School kids would have janitor. to stop. He's a PE teacher. He confiscates it and because they're pissing about with a mask, Ooh, and they go, "You maybe. can have it back at the end of the day." Yeah, you could turn that into something bigger once the mask comes on, and they go off and they're going to do some big evil plan and. Should we bring Odin and Loki into the mix? No. Oh, Bob Hoskins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't mentioned Bob Hoskins plays oh, God. Odin. Yeah, I didn't realise it was him for for watching the film. I was like, who is that as Odin? Is that... Um, I thought it might have been Brian Doyle Murray for a long time. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it, it really felt like whoever is playing Odin here, they're not quite good enough for a role this big. When you when you first see Odin, it's like whoever this is is someone too too good, too much of a character, bringing too much energy to this for it to just be like a one off little scene with Odin. Mm. So he's obviously coming back, but then he comes back too much, and it's like oh, they could have got someone better. You want Brian Blessed? Oh man, that'd be good. <laughs> Brian Blessed as the mask, while we still can. <laughs> what do you mean while we still can? <laughs> for he's dead. <laughs> yeah, doesn't mean he's got the energy to do it. Hey, right, you want someone who can embody different characters and roles mm-hmm. and really go for it. Let's get Daniel Day-Lewis out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Like you'd have to, he'd have to go and spend six months living as each little impression <laughs> the mask does. So it would take you know seven years to actually make the film, but. I mean, we've got the bones for an idea there. If, if if Hollywood wants to pay us to develop it, we will. We'll we'll make you something fantastic. Yeah, we'll make more we'll, of it. We'll figure it out. What about a film where where Ricky Gervais <laughs> finds the mask, just actually Ricky Gervais as himself, and it's like the end of the world because that's just too much. Like <laughs> that's too annoying. <laughs> it's gonna just destroy society. <laughs> giving him that much power. He turns into holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts turning into all these comedy characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who, who else was there? Camp David. 
<laughs> Count David, yeah. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> hey, you know what? Dr. Frog. Ricky Gervais is actually quite good at voices. <laughs> what about an animated The Mask film? Um, I think that makes sense, but it kind of... It almost makes two sense, because it's just be a cartoon there. I think part of the, the joy of this mm. is that it's sort of a cartoon come to life. Yeah, and it, and that that dynamic and the, and the yeah the, you're probably right actually yeah yeah so the, yeah, yeah right. otherwise it's just a cartoon isn't it? did Disney own the mask yet? <laughs> Don't think so. Not yet. Well, it's just a matter of time, isn't it? All right. So that is the mask. Um, hope you enjoyed. Uh, what's next? What's next week's all? The Lion King. Oh, that's something Disney owns. Yes. Be a bit of a biggie with the Lion King, and it's sort of straight to video sequels. And what about? Have you seen Killing Eve? No. The woman out of Killing Eve, mm-hmm. who plays the hitman, because she does all sorts of voices and accents. She's always like, she's like, I'm a, I'm a Eastern European, I'm a Russian hit lady, and then someone comes in and she's like, oh hello, lovely to meet you, and then she'll go off to Paris and be like. Oh, je suis un poisson, je suis un fromage, <laughs> and it's like, oh, she's good at all of cheese. She can do all the voices. Put her in it and make her play it like really scary. She's the villain, like stabbing people, like in Killing Eve. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Lion King next week. Yeah, Patreon. Bye, <laughs> John Boyega. He could be the mask. <laughs>